Hello, guys. Can you hear me? I am checking the internet here to make sure that it works. Can you guys give me some thumbs up and let me know if you can hear me or some yeses? This is my first time doing a live stream from this location. Okay, great. Welcome guys. It's really nice to see you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in this world. <laughs> it's very nice to see you. As you can see, I'm actually not calling from my original home in Brooklyn. Uh, and I know I had uh, five big announcements I'm actually going to make. I'm not just gonna make one. And I know some of you already know it already. Um, hello guys, there's so many folks from all over the place. Brazil, Nepal, Germany, Sweden, Chicago. Wonderful. Nice to see all of you. This is really exciting. This is the second live stream here. So I'm overjoyed to be with all of you. And uh, I even went through my other live stream too to pick up a bunch of questions. And I got some early questions from here as well. So I have like a whole list. <laughs> but um, I wanted to make uh, uh, just some announcements. I always have an outline. At least I had an outline and I think it worked really well last time. So the first 25 minutes, and if I finish it earlier, uh, will be the five big pieces of news that I have to share for you. Sorry to keep you on the cliffhanger. Um, 25 minutes of like just questions, a lot of questions that I didn't answer from last time too. I'm sure we'll need more time than that, but I'm gonna try to keep this an hour long. And then five minutes for kind of next steps and brainstorming. And then uh, five minutes for uh, all of you. So if you guys have uh, shout outs of like projects that you're working on, or maybe you've started in a new channel or you have some new news on your end, um, that will be fun to actually hear from all of you. And, uh, and, and as I found out, the, this video stays, it's no longer live after it is live, but it stays up on the channel. So if anybody has to go and take care of their daily chores or needs to go to bed or is just making a cup of coffee or is burning some bread in the oven <laughs> and you need that to not tune in any longer, then you could always tune in later. So anyway, I hope everyone is all well. Uh, you know, obviously the, the pandemic is still raging across the world. So hopefully everybody is happy, healthy, and safe wherever they all are. Um, it seems like everybody is very diverse. Of course, if there's chats on the side, um, please be nice to everyone. There's no need to be. Um, mean. I'm sure I don't have to remind anybody about that because everybody is generally like very nice, but uh, usually that toxic stuff could, that could go elsewhere. <laughs> it's always uh, it's trying to be as nice here as possible. But um, so I guess I could just jump into the news. Obviously you see that I'm not in Brooklyn. This is actually a new space. So my friends and I made this announcement the other day on my Instagram, but my friends and I went in on a property in upstate New York. Uh, we were looking for two years. And when it was, we weren't like, I would say desperate for a place, but we were just constantly looking and just being really active and looking for a place. And then the pandemic hit and what once was a real walk in the park actually became a sprint to the finish line because after the pandemic hit, we found that everybody was actually looking for a place outside the city. Um, but we were very lucky and we actually found something. And this is very, very exciting. Now, I'm not officially moving out of Brooklyn yet. Um, I am going to still principally be in Brooklyn, but I'm going to be splitting my time from there in this property. And uh, I don't know how I'm gonna manage it yet, but, uh, it will be very interesting. And, uh, and I am in, for people who are familiar with the geography of the United States and specifically New York, I am in the Finger Lakes region. So uh, if you know the Finger Lakes, it's these 11, unfortunately there's not 10, but there's 11 lakes that look like they've been gouged out of the upper part of New York because they have been gouged. So millions of years ago, there were glaciers that retreated, came through and then retreated out and they left these beautiful lakes, incredible gorges, 
I have some photos of the area. It's just really, really beautiful. And um, I'm just really excited to get stuck in on the land a bit more and to do this with my friends because honestly, I wouldn't have been able to do this without my friends. Um, and I even borrowed money from another friend, which is usually like a no-no because it could actually complicate things. Uh, so I have to be kind of on it and, um, and be really responsible and, and respectful. So, uh, but we all came together and we sat down and we said, you know what, we could all live in different places eventually, but we're so used to having a community here in the city, um, in, in New York City and building a community of people and being close to one another. Um, but we all grew up kind of in the country and we all knew we eventually would want to move back there. But sometimes when you're in the country, you're really isolated and alone depending on where you move. And, uh, and perhaps we could have like sourced different places that were close to one another, but that's also sometimes difficult to do. And we wouldn't get like a, a better slice of heaven, if you will. So now um, I think by combining our assets and our hopefully skills, we uh, came together to purchase land and it's about 90 acres, like I said, in the Finger Lakes region of New York. It's uh, exquisite here, but some of the land is hurting a little bit. So we will be restoring some of it, hopefully, for conservation and building our own little community and also uh, opening it up to the wider community. That's a greater vision. And that's probably the, the biggest news of the, uh, of the day. And I think the second biggest news I'm probably going to jump around here a little bit because um, I was going to announce this last, but I might as well announce it now. Uh, thank you guys for all your congratulations. I'm, I'm really stoked and I have to admit I've cried happy tears many a times. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do that here, but I'm very stoked. Okay. So the second bit of news after, after the property is I think with the property, it just makes sense to actually start a new YouTube channel. And I'm not exactly certain when I'm going to launch the new YouTube channel, but um, here, I'm gonna send you the link because we have we have a, a space up for the new YouTube channel. I'm gonna put it up in the, the chat section here. Okay. So I put it up in the chat section. It's a new YouTube channel. Um, there's nothing up there yet, but uh, if you want and you want to help us get it started, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, it'll actually put us a, a little fire under our asses. <laughs> I'm trying to, uh, I think Sonder is going to help out on this one because he's obviously part of the flock. The channel is called flock and that's what we're calling it here. Um, so we have Sonder, myself and my other friend, Joey who you may have met on my Instagram channel because I made that announcement. And uh, we started Flock Finger Lakes on Instagram and we're starting it as a YouTube channel. And um, yeah, it'll get a little fire under our butts to actually do something. And I, I really would love to be able to document this from soup to nuts. Just like, how did we all come together? How are we all figuring out living with one another? We won't be living in the same houses. In, initially, we have one house here. And so we're kind of all piled on top of one another when we're here. But, um, you know, how does it how does it work when friends come together? Um, how do assets work? How do making decisions? Um, what are we going to decide to do with this land, giving tours of the land, um, figuring out different challenges within the landscape? I mean, there, I think there's going to be so much <laughs> that it doesn't make sense to actually put it on the plant went on me channel because I feel like the plant went on me channel is going to be focused on indoor house plants, you know, botanical tours, field trips, house plant home tours, you know, the, all the good stuff that we've been doing over the last three and a half years. So if you guys are interested in that, please feel free to subscribe. I'll, I'll, I'll text the new YouTube channel and I'll try to put it down in the description afterwards, after, um, afterwards. 
And if you want to subscribe to that, that'll be great. I could actually then show it to Sonder and just be like, hey, look at people actually want to see this kind of stuff. Um, and then maybe I could convince him to, to be a part of that. Uh, I think we still have to explore you know, the style and what we're going to be doing on that channel. Like, is it going to be more vlog-like? Is it going to be, um, you know, more uh, preparation with like getting to know people around the area and making arrangements with them? Because I have to say, this area is just clamoring with so many interesting people. There's lots of different ways, like alternative ways of living here. There's like eco villages, there's tiny homes. Um, there's people who live completely off the grid. Uh, there's a lot of great agroforestry and permaculture stuff and mushroom foraging. I mean, you name it, it is here. And that's part of the reasons why we were looking in this area um, because I, I feel like that really hit a resonant um, chord with us. Uh, city slickers, if you will, even though not, none of us actually technically grew up in the city. I feel like we're city slickers. We've, we've lost some of that, uh, that edge for the country because we've been in the city for so long. All right. So those were the two new announcements. Um, so the third one, maybe this is a lot less exciting, but it's exciting for me. Uh, I launched a new course. And you might have heard about it from Instagram as well. It's called Troubleshooting Your House Plants. And this one has taken a little bit of time to actually produce because getting the photos and uh, the information around, uh, for, well, let me, let me step back. It focuses on three things, pests, nutrient deficiencies as it relates to fertilizing, and also plant pathogens. So I'm talking about viruses, bacteria, fungi, the bad fungi, um, oomycetes, algae, that type of stuff that um, you don't really find out a lot of information about when it comes to plants and house plants in general. So um, speaking with a lot of professionals and plant pathologists and getting all that information and trying to find um, photos and getting photos uh, to match up with that actually took a longer time. So I have that course and I've just launched it. Let me see if I can find a, a link. Mm. Okay, so this is troubleshooting your house plants. I'm gonna type it up here. And if you guys have taken the masterclass, then Actually, I just incorporated troubleshooting your houseplants in there. So that's going to be some extra sections. I'm still tweaking it. I'm still actually sourcing some images, getting some background information, but I wanted to get it out there and I wanted to get it out um, before Black Friday because that is the other bit of news. So that's like the, the fourth bit of news. Got ahead of myself there. Fourth bit of news is that across the courses, we're having a Black Friday sale and it's... Um, BF 2020, that's the code. So if you're interested in houseplant basics, which again is like the super basic course, if you're just getting into houseplants, um, then the houseplant masterclass, then we have the troubleshooting your houseplants, which is the latest one, and then the 125 houseplant care spreadsheet. And those are all the ones. I think I'll be done for now. Like those are, I always have like new ideas and new courses to kind of get out there, but um, you have to pace yourself. Look, I itched myself right here. I see I'm like all red on the side. Um, yeah, so that's that's the fourth bit of news. And uh, the fifth one, the fifth one I think some of, one of you have already guessed. And the fifth one is I am going to get a new chicken. And uh, I wasn't really planning on getting a new chicken. I think it's not an easy time for me to actually get a hen, but this is another foster hen. I have a soft spot in my heart for hens that are being thrown out. And this one was probably a school experiment. So oftentimes, I don't know if it's the same in a lot of your countries, but typically around Easter, people will get little hens that they hatch and then after they hatch, they kind of throw them away. Um, or in school, uh, they will like raise a, ch uh, a chicken 
and as like part of the class. And then after that, they just kind of toss them away, which I think is not necessarily like a, um, a good teachings for kids. Well, like, okay, here's how they hatch, but then we just toss them aside. Um, so I think the, the new one that I'm going to be getting was an exp was that because it happened around September when like schools start. And uh, she was raised by uh, one of the members of the Wild Bird Fund, which is where I got Kippy initially, my little chicken. And, um, and so she's probably very oriented towards humans. And I think it's a she. I think it's a she. That they haven't, she hasn't been sexed yet, but I think she's a she. And her name is Leche. And, uh, and uh, she's been um, raised by a gentleman by the name of Antonio. And I'm very excited to be able to meet her. I don't know when I will be getting her, but probably sometime in December. It really does throw kind of a, a wrench in the plans though, because it's going to be very difficult for me to travel um, back and forth, a little bit more challenging for me to travel back and forth from the city to here and back again, um, because typically I usually take a bus and uh, I'm not usually driving myself up to um, upstate. So I usually take a bus and they don't allow chickens on the bus. So I'm not exactly certain what I'm going to, uh, to do. I feel like I have to cross that bridge soon when I come to it, but um, not sure. So <laughs> yeah, and her name is Leche. Um, I didn't name her. Uh, she's kind of whitish, but she has like lavender fleckings and a little browns and a little grays through her principally white feathers. And then she also has feathers down her legs. It's, I, I'm not exactly quite certain whether, I don't think she's like purebred, so to speak. I think that she's probably a mixture of different chickens. There's very few uh, breeds that have uh, feathers down their legs but she's not like any one of those breeds. I think she's probably a combination. And uh, yeah, I'm so excited. So I'm excited to meet her. It's gonna be a lot of work, <laughs> but I think on this property at least, um, I'd be able to actually uh, accommodate some chickens. I would just have to actually convince my friends for when I'm not here to be able to take care of them perhaps. So we'll have to see. I mean, it's not, it's not really the best time, but, um, you know, when is the best time? So those are my five big news. So just to, just to recap, because I like to recap and summarize, especially for those who are kind of just tuning in now, is new property in upstate, but officially I'm not technically going to be moving out of Brooklyn. So you're going to see me going back and forth. Um, new YouTube channel, which I hope you guys would subscribe to, even though there's not anything there. We're going to try to figure something out in 2021 in the new year. And I would love your feedback on what you'd like to see on the channel. So if you want to write in the comments, what are the things that are interesting to you that you would like to see more of on this proposed new channel? That'd be really great to hear. And also what kind of style of stuff? Like, do you want to see some things that are like, a little bit more vlog like where I'm going around with like my phone. Do you like some of the professional quality that we've instituted on like plant one on me? Um, be really great to know, maybe a combination thereof. And uh, the different subject matter that you like. I mean, of course, I'm interested in being able to document like how we're actually putting this all together. So um, that would be helpful. And then uh, three would be the new course, Troubleshoot Your House Plants. And four is the Black Friday sale across all courses, which is exciting. And then the fifth is um, my little leche. I'm going to be getting a new chicken. Okay, so everybody's saying, uh, thanks, guys. Thanks for being excited. I'm, I'm, I'm excited, too. Outdoor gardening, types of gar uh, gardens, ornamental flowers, shrubs, and vegetables. Chickens will be cool, too. There'll definitely be chickens on it, for sure. Uh, small beginner growers, absolutely. Eco living content. Okay, so a little bit more of the the broader lifestyle aspects of it. Outdoor vegetables. Um, Alice is asking, will someone live here 100% of the time? And the answer is yes. So uh, Sondra will probably be here 100% of the time. Um, Joey is he just le left because he had a, another job. Um, he will be here probably the least amount out of all of us. 
And it's just by virtue of his career. He is a photographer and director of photography. And he travels, I mean, 340 days out of the year. <laughs> I mean, I was taking care of his plants in Brooklyn. And I think he might have been there like five days out of the year. <laughs> I mean, it was really, uh, it was really insane this past year. So he's been traveling quite a lot. And he just, he just got booked on another job. And, um, and obviously the jobs have changed now because of the coronavirus and there's a lot of um, uh, precautions that he has to take now. And so it'll be kind of uh, crazy. So yeah, homesteading, will you guys make a greenhouse? Uh, yes, I, because I, we have a, a few plants in here now, but I basically don't wanna take my plants from Brooklyn and just dump them all here without really thinking through the space and the spaces. And this house that I'm in now is like the main house uh, on this property, but it's, it's much larger than, than I'm accustomed to for sure, but it would not make sense for three of us or like eventually three families or whomever um, comes on board. So ideally this would be the communal house and eventually we would build our own spaces on the property and it's 90 acres. So it could handle, you know, multiple buildings. And we'd try to look at the landscape and figure out where structures would most likely be. I just don't want to like just drop them in the landscape without really, really fully thinking about it and maybe take on some more permaculture principles about setting things into the landscape. And it would make sense actually to build a greenhouse beforehand so that if I do bring plants up here, um, I could put them in a greenhouse and then eventually we could think through things. I mean, this space, I'll, I'll have to wait, you'll have to wait for the new channel to actually explore the space because this would be a wonderful houseplant home makeover, yet that would probably be unplant one on me. Um, there is a wall here that gets a flood of light from south and from the west. So a lot of great light and there's a big white wall in the back that they had a television on and it would be a perfect space for a green wall because you wouldn't be able to put, one, we don't watch TV so we just get, get rid of that. And then um, you can't have art back there because the art would just essentially bleach from the sun coming in. So I think the only thing that makes sense is actually having a green wall, right? Um, because you're getting that south and western exposure and um, it's very airy. So we'd have to figure out a new green wall model that would work. I probably wouldn't take my original green wall model that was like built like seven years ago in, in Brooklyn. That's a little different. And actually, I did copy down a question that Peter Cushing had. He said, the, where did I get some of my vertical garden components from my wall in Brooklyn? Um, search in hydroponic stores because when you're looking for those uh, permeable membranes and everything like that, you'd uh, search in hydroponic stores, you could probably find things online. I mean, seven years ago was a long time ago, so there's probably more options now. And honestly, I haven't looked into that. Um, the felted pockets that I use, they were all handmade. So they're all sewn together from felt. And you could get felt at any kind of textile store. There's online textile stores. Um, back in the day, I started my own textile store called um, Source for Style. Then it became Le Souk and now it's Sin Z B. So you could, you could find places online in order to be able to find um, uh, textiles like that. Um, if you're near New York City, you could probably go to like Mood Fabrics and things like that and, and pick up some uh, felt. But it's something that is you could easily get your hands on, but you probably have to, to do some sewing and stuff like that. Um, maybe there's even felted socks or anything. I haven't been doing that kind of research, but you just kind of have to be creative with it if you're if you're going to do like a DIY operation. Um, yeah, so so that's great. Um, I do have to admit that one thing I didn't say about this property that will hopefully come out on the the new YouTube channel a little bit more, but you guys are hearing it here first, is uh, this was uh, an old garden center. So there were hoop houses and infrastructure here, um, but there's, it's no longer that's the case. Like when we were seeing this um, space, 
a lot of people from the community were disassembling the hoop houses and they're going to be reusing them on their own properties and things like that. But that's okay because we'd rather start from scratch and like kind of bring in our own aesthetics. Um, there are certain things on this property that isn't necessarily aesthetically ours and, um, and we would probably change it over time, but this is not going to happen, you know, all at once really at all. Uh, this is going to happen over uh, a long, long course of time. And, um, and this is not, and this is like, for us, we, we find this as an investment in ourselves and in our, in our community here. Um, it was very important to us to find a community where people actually lived. And what I mean by that is if you get out of New York City and you're only like one or two hours away from the city and you're on a, a train line, you tend to get um, very transient people. So you have people who come in on the weekends and they actually don't live in these areas. And we really wanted to come to a place to live and, um, and to be a part of a, a community that's already here that's already um, kind of living and, and thriving and, um, and are not just weekenders. And, uh, and we wanna to transition to that and actually contribute to the community. And you know, the people who took care of this property before us really did take care. They cared about this property and, um, and you could see that. In general, people here in this area really care about the environment, they care about their properties, they care about um, the, even the public spaces that, you know, the state owns, for instance, or because um, you could see that in the amount of state parks that they have here, uh, people clean up after themselves in general. It's, it's, it's very nice to see, to come into that kind of mindset. So we're just looking at this as like uh, being able to just, um, as if we're just stewarding the land for a short period of time of our of our lives on this planet. And the idea of coming together is not that we'll like flip this and sell it later or anything along those lines. We have to actually decide amongst ourselves uh, what we're going to do with it because we're, we're doing it as a, as a group of people and that's very unusual. Um, I mean, typically people come in and they have like a partner and they come in and they buy the land and maybe they sell it afterwards and they flip it. But uh, we're coming together as partners, as a, as a group of people, and, um, and trying to figure that out legally, as well as an interrelationship between three very opinionated people, um, that's going to be interesting. And I think some of those soft skills that we've developed in our relationships together, and that we will have to develop as a relationship going forward is... Uh, is going to be very interesting and hopefully very telling to anybody who wants to live a little differently as well or might be interested in this way of living. So that is that. Is that. Um, <laughs> very exciting. Uh, I could talk about this all day, but I want to get to some of your questions. It, it's 1027, so we're just about on time. And I feel like I did ask answer Peter Cushing's question a lot of um, a little bit about the vertical garden component. So yeah, Peter, um, if you're still on, take a look at hydroponic stores, I think you'll be able to find some really cool stuff that you could, uh, and it might not be the exact same stuff that I have had in mind. But I'm sure if you, if you have a good eye, you could actually pick some things out. And um, there is another question that I had on uh, from Kelly B. This is from last time on bottom watering. And, are you guys like excited that I just talked about like something deep, like relationships, and now I'm going to be talking about bottom watering? <laughs> or do you want me to still talk about interrelationships? Um, Kelly, okay, I'm going to get your, your question on uh, bottom watering. You had you said, what are my thoughts on bottom watering? I actually bottom water a lot of my plants, um, especially the ones in my closet garden. So I have these, uh, um, what are they? Kind of like uh, water... I'm like losing the name of them. They're just, they have water in the bottom and they have a felted top on top and they pull up water. So all of those plants are actually in terracotta planters. And because terracotta planters are porous, they actually 
pull up the water through capillary action. And I exclusively water a lot of my plants that way. But you'll notice that sometimes um, they just bring up all of the uh, calcium deposits and everything and that you have this white rime that forms along the, the planter pots. And you have to remove those planters and then try to flush out some of that excess salts and, and fertilizer that might actually build up. So bottom watering can actually pull up a lot more of the salts and fertilizers than if you're actually watering from the top down. But I just think you have to kind of look at your own systems, like my wall, that's another system where it's being watered from the bottom up. And I, I think I made this announcement a little while ago, maybe it was even my last one, I started taking plants out of my green wall, and I have to kind of flush out that system. I usually do it once a year. And I have to tell you, it's taking me a much longer time this year, because I'm up here. And I'm kind of going like, one to two weeks on and off um, in different locations and trying to actually optimize my house so that I could be away for a longer period of time so I could be here. And, um, and that's very interesting. So some of my kind of sensitive plants I have to kind of shove into my biopod or I have to come and take them up here. It's, it's, it's gonna be a little bit confusing for me. I think in the first, um, I think in the first few months, but you know, what are you gonna do? Um, all right, hold on a second. Just writing some notes down that I'm seeing coming through. Okay, Daniel S asked me what my plans are post pandemic. And who knows when post pandemic is going to be upon us, Daniel? Um, I don't know. I'm kind of just taking a day at a time. But obviously, the the purchase of a new piece of property, I'm probably going to be spending a lot more time here. My heart breaks a little bit because I have such a lovely routine in New York, in the city, in Brooklyn, um, with the senior, um, senior living center that I volunteer at and the chickens that I volunteer for there. I have to say I've been a really, I've been really disappointed because there hasn't been many volunteers who have really stepped up to um, help the chickens there. So uh, one of my friends actually um, found out that one of the chickens was left out at night. And then he luckily passed by to put them in the, the coop is really dirty. Um, so I kind of feel like I, I want to be there for them. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, plant plants with Rose. Some thank you so much. Uh, so Rose just uh, has to jump off. Yeah, so Rose, uh, Plant with Rose is on here and she has a YouTube channel and she just donated $5. Thank you so much, Rose. Enjoy, she has to jump off and go on to her, I think she's live streaming too, so maybe you have to actually um, do two live streams. Somebody asked me what I'm drinking. It's um, fresh pressed apple cider <laughs> because it's apple season here. So it's, uh, it's very good. All right, there's, I think there's other um, YouTubers on here. So Plant with Rose was on here. And um, somebody just asked me, I was going to do this at the end, but Plant Kiddo from the Philippines, nine-year-old. Uh, somebody just said, can you shout out my, my nine-year-old uh, who just started a YouTube channel? So that's really fun. Um, if anybody else is on there, feel free to, to say hello. They might block. They might block you if you like put a URL, though. <laughs> I don't know. I see. It's kind of weird, this whole, like, I'm still getting used to this whole chat thing. Um, anyway, so Diego, Diego, I don't know how you'd pronounce your last name, Valle. Um, I'd imagine so if you're, if you're Spanish, in Castilian form, uh, saving a snake plant with wrinkled leaves. So I would imagine that if your plant has wrinkled leaves and I just did a snake plant care video, so, uh, you could probably tune into that. But if you have wrinkled leaves, there's something happening with your roots. So um, something is water is not being able to get up to those roots, most likely. So what I would do is actually remove your plant and just check the roots, make sure that they you have some. Sometimes even when we get like a, a potted plant, they might not even have a lot of roots. I think with the uh, with the enormity of interest 
when it comes to plants now during the pandemic and just with the, the whole love of plants, um, a lot of growers, I think, are just trying to get plants out the door and they're not even rooting them really well. So make sure that you have roots, make sure that your roots are good. If there's anything that are brown and mushy, kind of remove them. And if your plant looks like all the roots are gone, then maybe you could actually take a cutting of that plant. Um, and I show you how to, uh, to propagate snake plants. I did a whole video on that and even touched upon it in my snake plant care video. So I think there's a lot of people trying to shoot out, uh, shout out their channel. My Clean Leaves is on here, I guess. Uh, T the Hobbyist TV said, can you say the name of my channel? Um, so I'm sure that there's some other folks on here. Victoria uh, Berngard actually started her own channel. There's a lot of people starting their own channel. Good for you guys. <laughs> it's, a, it's an uphill battle, but it's a fun uphill battle. At least you're getting a workout. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's um it's fun though it's it's really lovely um root and leaf uh there's a there's a lot of folks on here um yeah dane i think that's how you say your name it's spelled like my second half of my riddle middle name summer rain or first second half of my first name summer rain uh dane i i have a um my friends and i went in on a property together um you ha you'll have to play back um, this, but I'm not technically moving from Brooklyn uh, as of yet. I mean, I'm just kind of going to be splitting my time. So um, anyway, so someone asked about whether I, Pablo, are you writing another book? Um, also D Baby Bear asked that too. Uh, I have started to write again. I write all the time. And whether it ends up turning into another book or whether somebody thinks that the subject matter is actually worthy, that's another, that's another thing altogether. Um, I, I'm actually writing about how, how I'm able to look at plants and may not know anything about them and, uh, or where they're from, but, but intuiting their needs. And I think that would be a very exciting book to write. It would be less of a top-down approach to plant care and more of a bottom-up approach and helping people learn how to observe plants. But I don't know if that subject matter is gonna be interesting to publishers. So if, if it's not, then I might have to go at it alone or actually turn it into a course or something like that. So, um, but I'm too scattered right now, I think between the uh, going back and forth and possibly getting a new chicken that I think it'll be like a little bit far off. So that hopefully will answer your question. George, thank you so much. Um, George just donated on the side. Uh, you could do that here with the super chat. It's so exciting. <laughs> George, that's very nice. And you have a really wonderful smile, George. <laughs> um, so yeah, George says, if you had a nonprofit status, you could qualify for a number of grants for some of your projects. And he's a grant writer. George, I actually really appreciate that. And that's something that we're looking into on this new property as well. Um, and we found out that we don't even have to be a nonprofit to actually do some of our, uh, to do some grant writing here. There's a lot of support for people who actually want, not a lot, maybe there should be more support for people who want to start small farms or greenhouses and things like that. So we're actually looking into that and we're just going to really be utilizing the resources of this area. We have great cooperative extensions. I don't know if there's something equivalent to that in other countries, because I know a lot of people are actually tuning in from other countries, but state assisted universities have cooperative extensions and those cooperative extensions do research for the state and the benefit of the people. So we have an agriculture cooperative extension here where we have professional people who literally will go out on your land and say, here are the things that you um, could do with your land in order to be able to conserve it or to manage your forests or to start your own farm. Um, and that's very exciting. And I think that we really want to embrace that and to have a slow dance on, on this property and the, the projects that we're going to do. And we hope that new projects come out of the, the passion that we put into it. So that's, um, that's very hopeful. Thank you so much, George. I really appreciate it. Okay. Somebody says they're having a real battle with fungus gnats. 
uh, I think it's in episode 124, 124 that I did my fungus gnats episode. And I usually do a multi-pronged attack approach when it comes to fungus gnats because you have to get them when they're in the egg stage as well as the adult stage. If you're just using like yellow sticky traps, for instance, you're just getting them the adult stage and yeah, maybe they will start to diminish, but you're not getting them in the egg stage. So I use like this really multi-pronged approach to fungus gnats. I sometimes bring in two to three different things um, with fungus gnats and uh, you can't get these everywhere, but I use Bacillus thuringiensis uh, subspecies Israelensis. And it's BT, but it's a subspecies of BT that is really focused just on fly eggs and fly larvae. So that is something that you'll probably need to look into. And if you're in your own country, you could see if that you have a, an analog or an equivalent to that where you are. Um, yes, they're also called mosquito dunks. They're focused on mosquitoes because as you know, um, mosquitoes are in the, uh, their dips, their diptera and their fly. And as such as fungus gnats, they're in that same grouping. So it's totally innocuous to, and not harmful to any other insect. So if you have a polydarium or a vivarium and you have frogs and you have isopods and you have other things that mosquito dunks will actually be totally fine for those other organisms. So that is something if you're into aquaculture and polydariums and vivariums and that kind of stuff, then you're, you, you should be good there. But whether you could actually get that in other countries, I know it might be a little bit difficult. So you have to take a look in that. I mean, I think I, in the EU and Australia, it might actually be different, but make sure that you're getting the same, the, the right subspecies because some of the subspecies of BT focuses on leaf chomping insects like caterpillars, for instance, for instance. So, um, so that should uh, hopefully help you there. Um, somebody asked, what does species actually mean? That question was asked like 10 million different times in my last one. Uh, and I think Wenge, actually, I don't know if I'm probably mispronouncing your name, asked that. So species is actually a combined word for a specific epithet. And it's basically, it falls below genus. So it, it is, uh, you know, a species is a specific group of organisms that are able to breed with one another. And they're usually geographically close together, able to breed with one another freely, and then can produce offspring that could breed with one another. So sometimes there's crosses between different species oftentimes those species are not able to actually um, produce progeny that is able to breed as well. Um, but it, 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 there's a murky area in there, but species basically means specific epithet and it's underneath the taxonomic rank ranking of genus. So when we talk about taxonomy, we think about that um, seven tiered pyramid, which basically looks like an upside down pizza and it goes through, you know, kingdom, phylum, class, you know, order, uh, family, genus, and then species. And, uh, and species is just the, the lowest of that pyramid that is able to define a specific group of members within a genus. And then you have, of course, things like subspecies, which um, might be a distinct geographical group of organisms that are can still interbreed with one another, but are distinct enough, maybe in form or shape or color that they've become like a subspecies. So hopefully that that helps. I feel like I didn't uh, answer that as to the best of my ability. All right, so Sparse Shetty asks, what is a cultivar? This is something that I actually mentioned on my last video. Uh, my last live stream is a cultivar stands for cultivated variety. And that is a plant that has been specifically selected by humans. So a human says, oh, wow, this plant is really interesting in color and shape. Let me select it and breed for those specific qualities of that plant. And that could be, again, 
a color, a form. It might actually be a cultivar that is resistant to powdery mildew or some other kind of disease. And then it goes into cultivation. And um, you can't really have a cultivar that is wild that hasn't been cultivated by a human. So what came up is the cultivar. And, uh, and I know that these classifications can be very confusing. That is something I really go more in depth to in the houseplant masterclass. So that's for folks who really want to go in the plant nerd zone and, um, and don't glaze over <laughs> when things like things along those lines. So hopefully that's really, um, uh, oh, are you guys blocking people? What's happening? Like that, that people have to block people. Are they, um, are they saying th bad things? <laughs> yeah, guys, try to be kind. Um, I, I, you know, this is a place where, you know, there's so much, there's so much rottenness in this world. Like, you know, if you could be kind, then that's, uh, that's the best, that's the best way to be. Um, I think that's, uh, so I'm not sure, quite sure why some people are being blocked. Oh, spammers. Yeah, unfortunately, that happens. Um, so uh, let me see what other questions I've had. My favorite plants right now. Um, who asked that? Robert M. Um, I, you know, I'm always a big believer in peperomia. I love them. I will always love them. Um, but kind of what I'm loving right now, and I'll tell you the reason why, and I already did a care video on them is aloes. <laughs> I'm really loving aloes right now because I am traveling now back and forth a little bit more. And I love coming home and seeing them just thriving because they don't need all the attention that um, that some other plants need to have. Uh, so I am kind of relooking at my collection from that standpoint through the lens of still having the freedom of being able to come upstate and back and uh, still seeing a, a, a house filled of, with green. So for me, aloes right now, I really love the different I'm going to use this word cultivars and cultivated varieties that are out there. There's some really interesting uh, cultivators or believe, uh, breeders maybe of, of, uh, of aloe. Kelly Griffin is one. You see a lot of Kelly Griffin aloes. Uh, and there's a number of others out there and they just are so beautiful and their flowers are so beautiful. And unlike agave, they will bloom year over year, which is, which is super great. So um uh, someone asked about payment options for my courses. Uh, I don't have any, but I, I promise I'll actually look into it. Uh, I think that where I host my courses, they have an option now to be able to pay in installments. And if that's easier for folks, then I will, uh, I will look into that. Um, the masterclass is definitely probably the more expensive of my courses, but I, I, I have something that is uh, across a range. And um, if you guys are just tuning in now, make sure to use the code EF2020 because that's the Black Friday uh, fr Friday sale code. I'm going to type it in now here. I can't type and speak at the same time. <laughs> I'm usually good at multitasking, but not when I'm like seeing a slew of uh, questions coming through and I'm talking and then I'm, I'm typing as well. Will I ever do a plant arrangement? Um, yeah, uh, probably. Uh, I, but probably more likely here when I when I get settled in here. So, uh, so she's. Uh, I, I probably end up focusing on plant arrangements where I have more space to arrange, and that's part of the reason why I don't want to just like drop a bunch bunch of plants in this house. I, I really want to take a look at this. This is going to be our community space, so. Um, you know, there's going to be a discussion between all of us of like, how we want to treat this space. And I think it would be, um, you know, in a way, I kind of have roommates now up here. So, <laughs> so I have to think about them when I didn't have, you know, roommates in, you know, Brooklyn, and I didn't have to really think about anybody else within my space. But I have to think about people here. And I don't want to just toss a bunch of plants just to have plants that doesn't make any sense right you know and and if I'm not going to be able to care for 
um, both of them when I'm going back and forth, you know, that's, that's a lot to put on a person. And, and I think, you know, plants, you want to have a balanced life with them, right? And I think there's times and place places where it makes sense. And sometimes when it doesn't make sense, and just because I love plants, it doesn't mean that I have to have them all or have them around me or all this other kind of stuff. I think what's most interesting to me at this part point is taking a look at the landscape and observing the landscape. Same thing that I would do with like observing plants in my home and seeing the different plant choices that the person before me planted in this landscape and saying, oh, you know, why is that not doing well? Because I have to tell you, there are a number of plants here in this landscape that aren't doing well right now. Um, or, ooh, that's interesting. Why did, why did he and she make that selection with that plant? And trying to put the pieces back together. Um, one thing I have to say is that we have been talking with the person who, one of the people who actually sold this place. But unfortunately, uh, one of the other people um, who was the main horticulturist here actually passed away. So um, it's unfortunate because, you know, that knowledge kind of passed with him. And so now I think it's more of like my duty to be able to take a look at the landscape and to understand why those choices were made and, um, and maybe have to undo some of those choices or make new ones. And I think that's what's beautiful about taking on spaces that were someone else's at some point in time is that you just layer on them like newsprint. And I felt like the same way with my home in Brooklyn is that, you know, that belonged to my then roommate at the time. Um, and I just, and then before that it was a steel manufacturing building. So, you know, you kind of just layer on, um, your approach and you try to respect the land and you respect um, the people who had, um, you know, was on this land before. And I think what's really interesting is that I'm trying to go back in history to understand more of the history of this land where we are. Um, you know, for those of you who obviously know the history of the United States, it's been one wrought with a lot of, um, uh, of pain as well. Um, there is a group of uh, American Indians that still live up here. They're in the Cayuga. They're part of the, the Iroquois. And it's uh, this area, they probably didn't live in, but they probably hunted on this land. And it was during, there is a terrible campaign in the U.S. history called the Sullivan Campaign, where uh they came down and basically raised all of the settlements here uh, of the Cayuga Nation. Now, the Cayuga Nation still live in the area. Um, they're pretty much uh, above Cayuga Lake in the northern part, and some of them had moved um, into Canada as well. But there is um, really wonderful people who live here now, um, whose land this probably was or had been part of their hunting land. So I'm trying to really go back in history and I'm speaking with the historical societies here and to anthropologists and, um, and, and having folks be able to tell some of that story. So I really, I really want to get a sense of the, I hope you get a sense that we really want to get a sense of this land and to feel like we're just stewarding it during the time that we're living here. And hopefully we'll be able to open it up to the broader community. I think in some way we'll be able to do that digitally if we start the new YouTube channel. So, um, so I'm hoping that uh, works out really well. And um, let me see. Uh, I can't tell what's... Uh, what about bonsai? I'd love to do something on bonsai. I'd actually really love to get a bonsai expert on, um, on YouTube channel. I, I was actually planning on going to Japan. It's one of my bucket list places, but obviously the pandemic has like turned everything on its head. Um, but I will probably be doing a bonsai in the new year. That would be really lovely. And I think what's really great about it is that I could uh, really open, I have more space now to actually be able to create and do things. And so I think you'll probably be seeing a little bit of this backdrop here for my Plant One On Me channel and a, lot, uh, a little bit of the backdrop within Brooklyn, but it will always 
uh, go back to around indoor and house house plants and things related to to that, as opposed to maybe the new channel, which could be on um, alternative living and homesteading and all this other kind of stuff. Ada, thank you so much. Um, she says you started me on my plant journey last aug August. Here I am today with over 300 plants. Always love you for bringing plants into my life. Thank you so much. I, that's so that's so sweet, and I'm so glad that you guys are got the plant bug <laughs> and that um, it's been inspirational. Always find out what works for you. You know, again, what works for me won't always work for everybody. And as you know, now I'm kind of transitioning between two places. I might end up changing over my plants in order to make it to make more sense with my lifestyle at this point. So that's going to be a journey for me. And you're going to have to see like, you don't have to be a, that, you know, that person with like X number of plants or whatever. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a competition or anything. Um, it, it's just do what makes sense for you and that you love uh, and that makes you feel healthy and balanced and well and everything along those lines. So um, anyway, so I, I really appreciate it. Thank you. Pam's Pretty Plants is here. Pam is another fellow uh, plant YouTuber. So hello, Pam. Thank you so much for tuning in. Really nice to see you uh, and, uh, and everyone else here. It's so it's amazing. Okay, so... Um, so yeah, so next steps for 2021 very quickly. Uh, I think I really want to start this, this new channel. I want to continue to do stuff with plant one on me. I'm going to put the, the new channel link again. And if you guys want to actually, um, subscribe to that, that would be like so dope. It would really get, uh, the bug under Saunders butt too to help out <laughs> because I think he's a little unconvinced um you know there's there's this balance and I want to make sure that he feels balanced as well because his pursuits are not always my pursuits we're three individual people who are doing three different things and I can't always like you know I can't expect him to be a part of this channel as well so it may be just me like shooting stuff but, um, but I think that it'll get a little fire under our butts to actually start doing stuff because there's this temptation to just live and not document anything. I mean, I think you guys probably all have that temptation when we're on like so tied to our social media. There's a part where we're just like, remember what it was like just to kind of like live and not document our life every like five minutes. Um, and I don't feel like I do that with plant one on me. I feel like, you know, we focus on education and everything along those lines. This will probably be a little bit more documentation of, you know, how we're living and how we're coming together, because I think there's a lot to learn. We have a lot to learn. And I think everyone has a lot to learn to, you know, how can we live differently on this, uh, on this earth? You know, it's not just about like coming together as a partner and like marrying and get a wh white picket fence and a house and everything like that. Like we're trying to, you know, crack what makes sense for us and maybe not do it the conventional way and not just doing it the conventional way for, for being unconventional, but just finding what works for, for us as individuals and as a, as a unit coming together. So, you know, three different friends with three different ideas but that are connected through um, our, hopefully our, our bond and our love for one another. So I don't know, it'll be, it'll be interesting. All right, so somebody says, wanna come to Brazil? I think I still have my Brazilian visa. It's good for 10 years. Um, it's been a while since I've been, uh, been to Brazil, but I think no travel, <laughs> no travel besides coming upstate in, the, in the, the coming months, I think, unfortunately. So five minutes. Are there other folks who are out there who are doing their channels or doing something interesting or they have a project that they're working on? Feel free to share in the comments on the right hand side and, um, and shout yourselves out and what you're doing. I think that, you know, I had a lot of questions last time on whether I am, um, whether I watch a lot of other channels and the answer is no, I unfortunately don't, but I want to be able to support y'all. So if you're able to, you know, shout out um, who you are and what you're doing, that would be great. Um, I don't get a, a lot of chance to be able to, to watch 
um, other things because I just, I usually don't watch the, I usually don't watch TV or YouTube or Netflix or anything along those lines. Um, and it's just been so busy with like shooting stuff and then balancing this. And if I get a chicken, I have to tell you, that's a lot of work. It's a lot of work living with the chicken. So Myra, I'm so glad you love the masterclass. Thank you so much. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Um, I've been adding a lot more to the masterclass and you will notice that if, uh, if you, if you have the troubleshoot your house plants um, or house plant basics, you could actually upgrade to the master class as well. And um, I added a lot more sections to the master class and a lot more video content as well. So I'm not sure when you started taking the master class, but you probably have the benefit now of having um, having more videos there. So, well, thank you guys. We're approaching an hour, so. I think uh, we'll have to do this again sometime. I really enjoyed this. I'm gonna have to go back and read all your comments. Somebody asked, would I ever get a dog? One of my, my friends here, Joey, is terribly allergic to dogs and cats. So I don't know if we would get a dog on the property. We really like, we all really like birds though. We, um, Joey loves, ducks. I love ducks too. And I have to say this new property, I know you haven't seen much of it. If you go to uh, my, my new Instagram account of flock finger lakes, you'll start to see little snippets of the property. But there is a lot of water here on the property. And I think it would be perfect for ducks, but we're not quite there yet. <laughs> I don't know who would take care of them. I think like some of my, my partners, they like ducks. They like chickens, but at the end, who's going to take care of them? Um, so I think that we have to just be really mindful about that. Oh, my clean leaves. Thank you again. Um, I'm going to shout out my clean leaves channel as well. So for those, for those folks who are shouting themselves out as well on the right hand side, my clean leaves ha has a great, you know, plant channel and, uh, and Ashley, she's shouting out Ashley. So love of plants. I love seeing you here also because you always have some of the most thoughtful and well-researched uh, comments. And I really appreciate you for that because I think that the comments and the commenters have been really wonderful and very knowledgeable. And I always say this, I said this with my 365 days of plants that please share how your experiences are with the things that you're doing and any of the research that you have done or that you have read because everybody could actually gain knowledge from that, which is really wonderful. So um, anyway, thank you so much, um, guys. I just wanna remind you that uh, you're awesome. <laughs> And, uh, and thank you so much for tuning in. And I will try to do this, like I said, every month. Pammy's Planty Things, thank you so much. Thank you for the big congratulations. I hope you guys are ex excited. You might not be as excited as I am, but I am really excited. And I hope that comes through in some of the, the stuff that we'll be creating here. And I will try to do a recap. And I hate to go, but um, I got a lot of errands to run here and we're trying to get mulch, tons of mulch on this property in order to be able to mulch things before it starts getting snow again. And, uh, and that is, that's going to be us today and tomorrow probably. All right, guys. Bye. Really love seeing you and have a wonderful rest of the day, whether you're starting it or whether you're going to bed or whether it's the afternoon for you. Bye.